Namaste dear all. Hope you all are keeping safe and fine. First of all, let me introduce myself. I am Mrs. Darshana Savan, science teacher of St. Ursula School, Varavde. I am very excited and happy to be the part of this great revolution in education. Children, now your teacher to have become digital, isn't it? Let's begin happily. Enjoy your studies. First of all, some instructions as usual, which I used to give you all. Sit straight. Be present with your mind. That is, now the teacher is not physically with you to mind you all. So, you have to mind yourself. Increase your listening capacity and your concentration power. Let's begin. Our science takes us to the real world present around us. Through your studies, you are going to understand all the natural phenomena taking place in the universe. Many scientists have discovered and observed this phenomena and put into the form of studies which you have to which you have to going which you have to be going to perceive it so let us begin with our science lesson 1 gravitation from section 1 Let us answer some questions. What are the effects of force acting on an object? Can you tell? Yes. Force acting on an object. An object moves. An object stops. A moving object stops. We can change the shape of the object by applying force. We can set the object into motion, we can throw, we can catch, we can pull, we can close, we can hold. All these things what we do in our day to day life is all related with force. What types of force are you familiar with? Yes, you have been studying the force that is from your standard 6. Different types of force you have studied. First one, muscular force, mechanical force, electrical force, static electric force, as well as the gravitational force. The most important phenomenon taking place on the earth and keeping all the things connected with the earth. That is all because of gravity and that force which is applied by the earth we call it as gravitation force what this gravitation is the force of attraction gravity or gravitation is the force of attraction force of attraction between two objects or two particles not only two objects but the particles attracts each other because of gravity that means, is the gravity present only on the earth? Gravity is present all in all around in the universe. Phenomena of gravitation was discovered by Sir Isaac Newton. Let's define what gravitation is. Gravitation or gravity. It is a natural phenomenon as you know. So let's define it. Gravitation is a natural phenomenon by which all things with mass or energy including planets, stars, galaxies and even light are brought towards one another. I'll repeat. 
Gravitation is a natural phenomenon by which all things with mass or energy, including planets, stars, galaxy, and even light, are brought towards one another. Gravitation force between Earth and Moon. Before that, let's understand what force and motion is. What is force? Yes, force is an energy. Force is a physical quantity. It's a vector quantity having magnitude as well as direction. There is a relation between force and motion. Before that, what we require force for? We require force to do small or the heavy things. That is, force is required by our body to lift up heavy luggage. Force is required to hold the pencil. Force is re required to hold the brush, to brush the teeth. Force is required to blink the eyes. So, without force, we cannot think of our life. If energy is there, that much force is applied. All these things you have studied before. Can you tell the relation between the force and motion? Force is an energy. So, if force is applied, motion is there. Therefore, force is required to change the direction of the object. Force is required to set the stationary object into motion. Force is required to stop the moving object. Force is required to bring the moving object to stationary position. So, force and motion are interrelated with each other. So, motion is there, that means force is applied. Even though we could see the vehicles moving, so from where the force is applied? The force is applied through machines, through the fuel. Therefore, force is related with mass and acceleration. So, force becomes equal when mass and acceleration is constant. So, mass into acceleration gives you force. Circular motion and centripetal force. Let's talk about circular motion. As we know, in our planets or in our solar system, all the planets are moving in a circular path. There are many examples around us which are continuously moving around in a circular path. There is one activity given here. Please perform if you like to do this activity. Take a string and tie a stone at one end of the string. Hold the other hand in your hand and rotate the string. What will be your observation? The stone starts moving in a circular path. Here, have you applied your direct force on the stone? No. The force comes from center, that is through you. The force is coming from the center, that means you are pulling the stone towards the center. If you release the string, the force will stop acting on that string and the stone will fly in a straight line. Through all these activities which you could see, In this activity, the force is seeking from the center. Therefore, the force acting on an object moving along a circular path or moving along the circle, it is directed towards the center of the circle and is called centripetal force.
These are the examples of centripetal force. There are few more examples around in your surrounding. Please try to write down some examples for centripetal force or the objects moving in a circular motion. In all these activities, force is seeking from the center. Therefore, the force acting on an object moving along a circle and it is directed towards the center of the circle is called centripetal force. I repeat, the force acting on an object moving along a circle and it is directed towards the center of the circle is called centripetal force. Do you think the same type of force is constantly acting on the moon? Yes. You see the figure, the earth and the moon. Moon goes around the earth. There must be a force which is exerted on the moon. Then, who exerts this force on the moon? Yes, it's earth. The force is exerted by the earth which attracts the moon towards itself. Then think about the sun and other planets as well as our earth. How is the solar system continuously in motion? Can you tell? Yes, the sun must be attracting the planets towards itself. So, it is clear that the constant force is exerted by the sun on the planets. So, Kepler's law. The next topic, Sir Johannes Kepler noticed that the motion of planets follow certain law. When planets are moving around the sun, they do not move in any manner. They have a disciplinary path. So he observed that and he described about this planetary motion. These three laws are known as Kepler's law. First, let's know what ellipse is. Ellipse is a curve having two focal lengths, two focal points. Some of the distances to the two focal points from every point on the curve is constant. Let's see. This figure is taken from your textbook. You could see an ellipse and the two focal point that is F1 and F2. Points A, B and C are on the ellipse. Therefore, AF1 plus AF2 is equal to BF1 plus BF2 is equal to CF1 plus CF2. Now, we will put this formula to understand Kepler's law. Kepler's first law. The orbit of planet is an ellipse with the sun at one focal. So, first figure, observe the sun and the earth moving around it. You will find as it goes away from the sun, its movement A plus second law. The line joining the planet and the sun sweeps equal areas in equal intervals of time. Observe the figure carefully. The line joining the planet and the sun sweeps equal areas in equal intervals of time. Kepler's third law. The square of its period of evolution around the sun is directly proportioned to the cube of the mean distance of a planet from the sun. The square of its period of revolution. What do you mean by period of revolution? The period of revolution, the time taken by the planet to complete one revolution around the 
sun. So let's take an example of earth. The period of revolution of earth around the sun is 365.2 days is directly proportional to the cube of the mean distance of a planet from the sun. Mean distance, the distance of the planet from the sun. So the distance of our earth from the sun is 149.6 multiplied by 10 raised to 6 kilometer. So if these two quantities are in direct proportionality, we'll find, we'll get a constant. To get the cost constant, we have to divide t square by r cube. So all these quantities which are there, that is mercury, its period of revolution is 88.0. Distance from the sun is 57.9. So you have to calculate t square. t square means square of 88 divided by 57.9 cube. After calculation, you will find all these cal values are approximately equal. Therefore, Kepler's third law tells you that the square of its period of revolution around the sun is directly proportional to the cube of the mean distance of a planet from the sun. You will find the areas here in the picture which are painted blue in color at epihelion and perihelion. These two areas are equal.